So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, um, and welcome to the Cold Bath Clubhouse. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Vince Greeley from Wheelies in Harrogate, and it gives me great pleasure in partnership with the fantastic people from Chevy Cycles uh, to welcome you to this evening's chat. Um, a couple of housekeeping, well, one housekeeping point in particular. Could you please just make sure that your phone doesn't embarrass you in the middle of the talk, um, or you'll be the laughing stock? And there's always one. Make sure it's not you. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, it would be remiss of me not to say uh, a big shout out to Derek, who's standing behind and will do the wash up, in fact, after Kai and Sarah have spoken, because um, Derek's been the driving force behind all of this and made it happen. So thank you, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Um, So, uh, Guy and Sarah, um, what can I say? Well, um, many of you will no doubt be familiar with, um, with Guy's work, particularly if you're into your mountain biking, from reviewing endless bike products and general bike enthusiasm yeah. across the way. And hopefully, a lot of you will have seen um, the YouTube channel, um, and if not, it's something behind me, and you pay attention a bit more. <laughs> um, if not, I'm sure you will be familiar with it after this evening. But for those of you who are familiar, um, then you'll know they, um, they have endless enthusiasm, not just for, um, for all things related to bikes, um, but for exploring our countryside, the new flora and fauna, crucially our history and our culture, um, and using the, uh, the magic of uh, back lanes uh, around our countryside, uh, and uh, particularly by gravel bike. Um, and they, are, they have a specialist subject on Mastermind, which is a very niche subject, and that is exploring the back roads of the UK um, by a gravel tandem, which I didn't know was a thing, but there it <laughs> They're is. They're quite rare beasts. I was just having a bit of a look at it, and I spotted on the, um, on the handlebar stem on the back, it says quit, um, but on the other side, it says can't. So yeah, <laughs> it, it's all good. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand over to Guy and Sarah. Well, thanks very much, Vince, and thanks everyone for coming down. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, in the manner of our videos, we'll start off with a plan and some notes, and then probably get horribly lost, backtrack, and not make a great deal of sense. So bear with us. Uh, anything, if you speak too fast or we don't explain anything properly, just raise your hands if you want to know what we're saying now. But otherwise, we'll have questions at the end. And uh, if we chew through what we want to talk about, Derek has got some questions as well that he's going to throw at us. So uh, but obviously, you know, we're here to stop tell you about the channel, but also to learn about what you think of the idea and how you'd like to see it presented. You know, this very, it's something we're very much doing as a hobby at the moment. I've got another YouTube channel where I test bikes, but this is just, this is just our plan for doing something that we both think really enjoy doing and it means we can also get uh, tea and cream teas and shandies on the uh, business account. <laughs> so, uh, what is Pedaling Past? Primarily, it's a YouTube channel where, as Vince was saying, we take you through the history of the UK on quiet back roads, gravel tracks, farm roads, in the best way we think to uh, enjoy that and that's on a bike. But we've also got a commute app, if you're familiar with that, uh, for your phone or a website where we post the routes and photographs as well, so that you can follow them online uh, when you're actually out riding. And we've got an Instagram page and Facebook page as well, just to, kind of for news. So, Sarah. So Guy's sort of background in cycling is really well known. He knows all about the bike side. It was actually, from riding with my lovely friends, that we we started riding on road rides and I was finding the roads a bit busy and I wasn't really enjoying it. I went, did used to do mountain biking and I really enjoyed that feeling when you're in the wild and you're not quite sure where you are. So I had a lovely friend. Um, so my friend Mike, Mike Hall, I don't know if um, you know who he was, but he, set the world record for riding around the world. And he had this saying, and he always went, go get lost, then get unlost. And I don't like that. I like to get slightly mislaid and then find my way back. And that feeling of just being out in the woods or out on the gravel ride somewhere, and then finding your way back, I really enjoyed. But we realized that it's really hard to put routes together, especially when you're looking at gravel rides, because you can be quite a long way 
on, a, on an OS app. And then guys started putting it all together and I realized that these were actually really good at that. And I thought, this is something that we can share with people. So we started to share our roots. People were really enjoying them. And um, the history side of it, Turn it on. yeah, the history side of it came because I'm from really old Dale's family and I knew loads of folklore and all these stupid tales that I've been brought up on. So I started telling Guy all these stupid stories that I knew. So if you're looking for like sort of down snow level podcast, this is more like horrible histories really that we've just got some 1066 really and all that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that sort of thing. So basically that's where it came from was... You telling me it was a great idea, but you thought yeah. it was, and I, we ought to get on with doing it before someone else did it. Yes. So, yeah, it was Sarah's foot up my behind that started the whole channel. Uh, so, what do you do? What's your part of Peddling Hats? So, I do all the sort of history research. I'll look at somewhere and go, I really like to go there. Can we get a route together to go there? And Guy will see if we can get... Because that's, that's part of how it started. You had a plan where you wanted to start a ride in a different alphabetical place. Oh, God, it is. Yeah, I forgot that. You want to do, want to do yeah. the alphabet. So the challenge every time was for me, Sarah, go, I want to start with some, well, we're up to C now. We have to start with C, but I want a castle or a yeah. pond. And so that's how it, I clearly yeah. forgot about that. So yeah. that's how it started. That's how it started. But then, then you started doing the research side. Because you're, you work in research science. Yes. I do. With your work anyway. And I, I'm really nosy. I have to know the far end of everything. And, oh, well, what's that? And we're pedalling along. I'm like, oh, what's that over there? I like the look of that. Can I look? Because the thing is, I like to look about when I'm riding. Thank God I'm on the back of a tandem. But I'm looking about, and I don't really like that sort of... Right, I like to be, oh, what's that? And I found something interesting. Let's stop. Let's go and have a look at it. And that was really where it all started. Yeah. Was me spending a lot of time finding out about these places on guys wonderful putting together roots yeah and the nice thing is about historical roots uh, so historical places is that they tend to be joined up with ancient trackways which are often neglected now but still perfectly rideable on the bike i mean roman roads are fantastic way to get around the country so you go to somewhere like norfolk and they're they're basically a motorway <laughs> you know they're still really well drained they're, they're not always straight, but they're not, you know, they're generally quite straight and you're just free from traffic. And what, well, sorry, I've jumped ahead of it here. I, I did we, that too. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> so it was basically, you know, why we chose gravel. Uh, I mean, do people, are people rough, roughly familiar with what a gravel bike is? It's just any bike with slightly bigger tyres, is what it actually is. And it's just, it's, it's a bike you can, which gives you a bit more freedom to ride off-road. We don't do anything daft. That's from the other channel. We occasionally get it slightly wrong. I think the video from Reef might be coming up later where we got lost down a quarrying site, which ended up a bit of an explore. <laughs> but we but, do always put on what sort of level it's at. We'll always say, this one's like, you need a mountain bike to do it, or you need to be quite a technical rider. Or there's one that we've done that is the front of Nairsborough. Mm -hmm and it takes you, we'll show you around where to get a coffee, and that is if you were a real beginner, if you had maybe your children or grandchildren with you, that would be a really lovely introduction, because it's really yeah. flat, it's not technical at all. I think it's seven kilometres there, yeah. there. But, yeah. it's, but once you start looking at the history, it's amazing how quickly that becomes a day ride. Mm -hmm. Once you stop at Conningham Farm, and then you go to Conningham Hall, and then you go to the bridge, and then you go to Mother Shipton's, you know, and then you go past the boats at Marigold and then you visit the, you know, the chapel in the rock. And it's, it, just doing that one was kind of yeah. a really interesting example of just how much. And then you spend three hours the night before finding about the murder mystery all about it that's in St. Robert's Cave. And, you know, and, and then you end up at the watermill yes. where you have tea and cake and then you just pedal back. And you suddenly yeah. go, Crafty, this has taken us like three hours to film but you could easily, you know, that's a four off. If you were with kids or with someone who was new to cycling, it's it's zero effort. It's almost zero effort. But you know, as long as you push up by the ice cream bit at, uh, at the main road. But you know, almost traffic free. And then we've got the other end of the spectrum is where we've done some uh, by Hadrian's Wall, 
and things like that, and up at Reef, where so we're trying to we're trying to sort of find our way as we go along is as what people are prepared to do, but offer a breadth. And while we'll primarily film the gravel option, we'll always put a road option in as well. So I mean, I did one in Cambridge recently, where at this time of the year, a lot of the tracks are very very soggy and boggy, and there'll be a fight. But literally. 300 meters away, there's a nice backcountry road you can join exactly the same dots up on. And so hopefully, you know, that's our idea is to, it's kind of just to almost give people permission to go out and enjoy the countryside at their own pace, really. And I think the slower you go, the more you enjoy the routes. I agree with that 100%. Take time. The thing is the smell. It's when you're riding along and you can smell what the farmer cutting the field or the flowers that you're going past. And in that everyday life, that just all passes you by really quickly. Yeah, or it's behind but, car windows. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But the other thing is that I was going to say is at the point we filmed it, that was the conditions then. And obviously when you're on gravel and it's a farm track or it's something, those conditions can vary in winter if there's been heavy rainfall. So we can't say... 100% accuracy it's easy or hard it depends what the weather's been doing yes yeah, I mean we'll try and use our experience to convey that on the video and there are some videos I mean I've got a couple of videos which I'd love to shoot but they'll be in summer there's a great route out of our Castle Howard which goes along the Ridgeway uh, just to the north of uh, Castle Howard and there's found beautiful views but at the moment it'd be axle deep and there's absolutely no point in going there but in summer That'll be fantastic. Whereas there's a route uh, that we've done from Borough Bridge just to uh, Fountains Abbey, which is almost entirely on uh, quiet back roads and the metalled farm tracks over near Cockgrove. I don't know if any of you have walked or ridden there, but they're really, really rideable all year round. But again, it's kind of having that experience. I mean, we've got local experience here, but it's sort of my experience over the years of getting stuck up in the axles and being able to read a map and look, you know, oh, right, there's a stream there. There's a stream there, there and there. Right, that's going to be soggy. It's at the bottom of a hill. It's in a wood. Probably not worth riding at this time of year. And, and like Sarah says, it's something I've always done. I've always thought maps are far more interesting to read than books. Uh, and I... I was actually lucky enough to work with Cycling UK. I don't know if you've heard of the King Alfred's Way routes and the West Kernow Way in Cornwall, the Rebellion Way in Norfolk. And that's really that's where cemented the idea of mixing history and cycling just works really, really well. Because those have been hugely popular routes. Uh, you know, there's whole businesses opened on the backs of that selling King Alfred's cheese or, you know, Avery Stone Circle Cyclery or whatever, you know, there's, there's little people working in garages now, purely, you know, having given up their job just so they can look after people coming past and, you know, camping as they go through. So we're like, well, not everybody wants to do a 300 kilometre round loop. Maybe if we just cut it into chunks so people can try the idea, then that's what the idea of these routes are. But what we're trying to do also is group them around the centre. So you can either so you can either stay there for the weekend or for a, for a couple of days and do a series of loops out around. Or if you you know if one route is going to be too short for you that day, you can daisy chain two together. So the example I made with the route from uh, Borough Bridge out to Ripon, there's another route that links from Ripon out to Broom and Rocks. So you could easily daisy chain those together. And, form. and so as we're building it up uh, that's the idea is to just create more of yeah. it's kind of this. we're calling it we're calling it hummingbird tourism so we're creating sunflowers or daisies so yeah. you're in the center and you're doing loops out and then you stay in there and hopefully helping the lovely economy along with all these wonderful cyclists so they'll think we're all great yeah, because we're actually, because if you're, you know, if you're coming in and you're spending in the local shops, which is something we really believe in, using local yeah. independent food and things like that, you're actually bringing something, like a hummingbird coming in and pollinating the flat. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a marketing phrase they use inside the UK. The one they don't generally use is seagull tourism. 
<laughs> which is just flying in, stealing stuff, and being all over the place. <laughs> so, so we're trying to avoid that uh, and just promote. Well, just just promote. You know. Well, that's why we use a lot of the historic routes have got national trust properties or English heritage properties, which are really, really good to use if you're on your bike. They've generally got a water tap, they've generally got bike storage and a lock. Um, the cafes have got really nice food and, it's also, and they've always got a loo. Yeah. Um, and so I always like to put them into the route because you know they're going to be open because a lot of... Sometimes you get somewhere, particularly if it's getting late, say four o'clock, everything can be shut. So you do, we do yeah. try and get you around that and we'll find that there'll be somewhere open for you to get food or for you to, we'll always list like the local bike shops in case you've got an issue with your bike or something like that. Yeah, and how to get there. And that'll be, that's put in the start video, but it's also on the commute page. And obviously there's comments on the video. If you've watched the video, you know, we always encourage people to comment in the, on the YouTube videos below or on Facebook and just ask questions all the time with them. Should probably check the notes because I think we've I think we're we're wildly well. we've wildly done a plan. Wild, yeah, this is what normally happens. We always have a plan and then we get talking and off it goes. <laughs> so uh, again, why gravel bikes? Uh, I was saying it gives you that extra sort of element of where you can join places up. You know, there are loads of routes around here that would be separate road rides, and yet at just a little bridging section, a farm track, will just almost teleport you from one to the other. And like Sarah was saying, when you're riding along, you're free from traffic, you can stop wherever you want and have a picnic, or just look over the hedge without worrying about where you're going to park your bike, or be in the way of traffic, or because you're on a bike, you don't have to worry about where to park your car. But you're getting further than you when you're rambling. And I think my most overused phrase when I'm filming these videos is, oh, I wonder what's, what, what are the stories that this route can tell us? Because all of these routes are like a sort of linear soap opera. You know, some of the, you ride the Ridgeway down near Avebury, that's been used for probably 8,000 years. You know, that's been used at least from the Neolithic. And you think, wow, how many people have walked along here? You know, people who've just, you know, all the cliches, people just fallen in love, people who've just had a fight, people who've, you know, been attacked by, you know, bandits and the Robin Hoods or... The horses. one that I found the most, um, that I, I really pictured where, what had happened is the one at Reef, and it's it's called the Coffin... Coffin Road, The Coffin yeah. Road. And when you're riding along, there are these big stone slabs that basically people that couldn't afford to pay for the horse and carriage to take the coffin round to the church, they carried it. Yeah. And so the paths that you're riding on have got these big slots where they would rest it to take the weight and then they'd set off again. And I found that incredibly moving and you could just, I could, I could literally picture that happening and it was yeah. so immersive. Because it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's around a, 15 it's, miles. It's from Muka all the way up in Wensleydale, all the way down to Grinton Church, because that was, the biggest church and the, the one highest up the valley where they were actually conducting burials and it you know there are so many and but also there's some you know there's modern stories as well you know that was one of the questions i was going to ask is at what point do people stop being interested because i was thinking you know there's routes you could do around world war ii airfields but i don't know if that's of interest but you know i've got one planned out starting at the naffy at elvington air museum and then there's about six or seven bomber airfields and the old uh, sort of tactical depots on Skipwith Common and things like that. And again, those could be quite eerie and evocative places. You know, you're riding through old conning towers and old hangars and things like that. You know, that's another element. Because what we've, again, what we've found, the more hyped the place you're visiting, the more underwhelming it tends I to be. I agree more. That's I, we went when we went down to did that Avebury route. We 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 got into it, um, the Wayland Smithy, yeah, which was the most like spine tingling place I think I've ever been to. It had such an atmosphere to it, and you walked in and really feel it. And then the day after, we went to Stonehenge, and I was like, I don't get this. 
because it was packed and that we were there there was a druid at the same yeah there was time, a druid so popped out it was really Wayland smithy is an old <laughs> neolithic long chambered tomb and we got chatting with this obviously bearded chap yes and his and girlfriend who were on a tour all the way trees. down from anglesey yeah. to kent weren't they and they were doing a little dance with trees yeah <laughs> we were like right okay we won't, we won't film the little dance with trees uh but bless them you know they they were still having that tradition it just and it's just you know it's a small it's a mound in some trees but it felt very personal and because we'd ridden there yeah you know we'd immersed ourselves in the landscape we've seen the number of sort of burial mounds increasing as you got close to it and you have that real sense you know yes you're not on a horse you're not wearing sandals or carrying a spear but i think traveling on a bike or on foot certainly gets you a lot closer to that sort of time travel feel than yeah. you would in a car yeah. and so I, and also i like the phrase time travel gravel so i try and throw that around as, as much as i can although my daughter insists that that doesn't rhyme you're never going to persuade no exactly no never <laughs> going to persuade the phrase that doesn't rhyme but uh, yeah you weren't impressed with Stonehenge were you I really wasn't oh and also top gem St Mungo's Church how many of you have ridden past Cockgrove north of have you ever been into the tiny little chapel did you know there was an, there was an Iron Age fertility carving on the wall in there and a, and a medieval font absolutely fascinating and just to let just the side of that there's a pagan shrine that's a spring as well which is the original st mungo's so the chapel is very close to that and it's just and it's everywhere you look every field that looks like a large pair of poor dry trousers is an old medieval field system where you know successive plows have tried to put the earth in the center which was their allotted patch rather than putting it on the neighbor's patch you know, or there's, you know, there's innumerable, like, deserted villages. Even if, you know, even between here and Ripon, you could get absolutely lost in the history. And you found... The thing I do keep finding, and it's quite accidental, never meant to do it, Greek Orthodox churches. Yeah. In the middle of fields. I've yeah. found three now, but yeah. I didn't know. Was it three? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because we found that one... Found the one in a railway the... station in yeah. Norfolk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely the most beautifully decorated. Oh, the Ting one. That's right. The Sandrine, yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely forgot that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's that sort of thing, it's that, it's that feeling that you've discovered something special. And for me, we did a ride um, where Hockney painted, you know, the Hubbard? Oh, around Huggard, the yes. The Hubbard ride, and we'd had a right mare. There was, we were trying to come through this field and there was, your cows and I don't particularly like cows either so I was I was quite we were going through quite gingerly and we had to go up the other side and we turned the corner and you I don't know if you've seen the David Hockney paintings but the light that comes through and it lit all the fields and this beautiful little chapel and I just stood there and I, fe I felt like I had seen something that nobody else had seen it was yeah so I mean we I hadn't even noticed it on the map because on the no S map, it was just this tiny block. I don't think it was even marked in no. chapel. And you were like looking at it going, that's not a bar. Yeah, and what's you, that? you stop by it and, and again, again, because you're on a bike, you just yeah. stop. Yeah, and you just, just go and have a look. At it. And, and then, then I was at work the following Monday and they were like, what did you do? And I was like, so smug. Because I was like, I did a ride and found a thing. And it was, it's that adventure, it's that feeling of freedom that I think gravel riding gives me. It's just the freedom of it that I like. Because there's no pressure, because it's not, I mean, Sarah was playing when we were riding a mountain bike. Oh yeah, this is, oh. this is one of the, uh, we were talking earlier yeah. about when it's a little bit overgrown. I think this yeah. is near Massum, isn't it? And this was, this was high summer. And because yeah. that's, because uh, my friend Kira gets quite cross when people go, I rode your route and there were nettles on it. It was like, <laughs> it's 300 kilometers long. We're a volunteer trail or, you know, we're a volunteer cycling charity. We can't strim all the hedges. <laughs> so, so or, or they complain that there's, you know, the cows have made a mess or, and so unfortunately we can't control all of this. So there is this, you know, adventure element of it. But I think, I'm pretty sure at this point, the audio, if I had it on, would be going, it's not far now, Sarah. It's not far now. <laughs> 
<laughs> like you didn't, you had a vest top on for this ride as well. So uh, at least on the front of the tandem, I tend to take most of the nettles I just before they that. get to Sarah. I tend to just do that. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah gets the deep puddles, and if the back tire explodes, <laughs> that was a very messy incident when we ran sealant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was on a three. I had sealant in my hair. Yeah. And it took me three days to get it out. Yeah, <laughs> and it was a particular kind of sealant that had glitter in it, which is a bit odd. But yeah, so. There are, I mean, this is the downside of gravel, I would say, and, you know, occasionally getting the muddy side. But at least you've got a bike to walk in front of you if you'll just get off and push. And that's, that's the other thing. There's no pressure. Because you found with mountain biking, because yes. you're on a mountain bike, people go, oh, you're a mountain bike. You must, like, do daring things and jump off stuff and career about. With a gravel bike, there's absolutely zero pressure. I mean, any bike. And I say, sorry, I kind of keep going on about gravel bikes. Literally, a touring bike hybrid a mountain bike even even a normal road bike ridden a little more carefully will cope with 98 percent of the riding that we do i mean if you ever see the parry if you ever watch parry roubaix race the surface is there hammering across on that on state-of-the-art race bikes and they survive generally pretty well so it's it's just a case of like we were saying before just doing stuff at your pace really yeah Absolutely, and and push. Just the the biggest piece of advice I think is take your time, enjoy it, absorb everything. It's your time. You you carved out that time to do it. Enjoy it the most you can, and um, always eat more than you think you need. <laughs> yeah, that's that's been your big learning. Yeah, my motto I, is you can always eat less later. Yes, which I've learned over the years, <laughs> and I would advise anyone who's a cyclist to take that on. Yeah, if you if you're gonna do a, a ride, I I have um, they're not oh, on, I usually. Off, sorry. Yeah. I have two little pots on the front, and I fill one with them like Haribos and those quick hits if I need something, yeah. and then then like a tracker bar or something like that. But I tend to eat something about every hour because it's. it's We've had some moments, haven't we, dear? Yes. There have been some single engine moments on the tandem. <laughs> he knows. He knows because I go really quiet. Which is unusual. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. having to force feed you flan in a uh, religious farm shop. And I didn't realise it was religious. I thought I was seeing things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, What's it called? Walsingham. Walsingham, it yeah. Walsingham. Little Walsingham. <laughs> the, uh, the, the pilgrimage. What's they call it? The Nazareth of Norfolk, That's I right. believe it's known That's as. That's right. Again, I thought it was a farm right. shop and I said to you, I keep seeing the Virgin Mary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and many priests. And you thought you really thought you'd overcooked it that day because it was quite a hot day. Yes. But uh, yeah, I mean, so we have we have had variances. You know, we've, we've, we had our little sort of desert moment in Thetford Forest in about 45 degrees. Turns out tandems don't work so well on sand. Uh, Vindolanda. Oh yeah. If you've ever, if you've, I don't know if you've watched the Vindolanda one, but Guy got really cross with me because he kept looking down. And, and we I were walking through this Roman site, and I was trying to do my, you know, proper Discovery Channel. And here we are, we're walking along the old Roman street, and it was like I thought I was walking with, with a toddler because <laughs> you just kept looking at them like that. I was like, Sarah, Sarah, trying to film. Well, you know what's at Vindolanda, right? Loads of shoes. Italian shoes, Loads obviously. Italian it being shoes. a Roman fort. Yeah. My Italian shoes fell to pieces and the sole just fell off. <laughs> yeah, so, so we added another Italian winter boot to the record of Vindolanda when we visited there. And, but kind of our attitude is the adventure is part of the appeal of going out there. There's a, there's a lot of serious route guides and kind of like challenges to be had out there. We're very much on the other scale of that. And that's kind of why we've done video as well, because there's a lot of books there's a lot of maps, but A, we'd have to pay to get them published, which, you know, this is pretty much a hobby for us, but also you'd have to pay to access them, which is great. I mean, you know, it's great that the CTC gets supported by the guidebooks that I help write for them and stuff like that. But the nice thing about this is you can watch it wherever you are and think, yeah, I fancy that. I fancy doing that because I've seen what it looks like. Oh, nice. oh, we're there. So oh, this is the world's one, anyway. Yes. So, uh, and again, you know, we start, and we haven't really talked about how I put a route together, so may as well do that now. Uh, so, Stamford Bridge, site of the Great Battle, uh, uh, just before, it's basically why the Vikings lost the Battle of Hastings. 
sorry, the Saxons, by the way, Vikings once removed, but anyway, uh, they had to force march from Stamford Bridge all the way down to the back of Hastings, arrived exhausted, got beat by the uh, Normans. But, so you just, what I do is I'll just look about and go, okay, right, there's an old canal down there, there's some tumuli there, so we'll head down the canal to Pocklington, we'll have, we can have tea and cakes in Pocklington, nice stop, and then you go up to Millington Pastures, which is a beautiful area of prehistoric uh, sites, and, and Sarah was from, Sarah's mum was from Huggett as well, which is at the top of the wall, so Sarah could bring some of her local knowledge to it as well, and again, you've got the Hockney element, there's fantastic views up there, but because the Wolves is quite a hilly area, we're like, right, well, okay, we'll also have a, a flatter route as well. So you can go to the foot of the walls and then just go straight up to a beautiful medieval linear village running along a stream that comes out of the walls. And so you can go straight up to there and then you come back past Balsotton Prison, which has its own interesting histories. Certainly if you look at the two different groups of inmates they put there, which are the hyperviolent and then with those with uh, unmentionable crimes, pretty much. Yes. And the, weirdly, there's a, there's a surprising amount of really bad beatings and murders within the prison there. It's like, hmm, it's almost like they put those two groups together. But uh, anyway, we probably won't go into that. And then back again through more history, back to Stamford Bridge again. But I primarily use ordnance surveys because, and I use the website because that lets you plot out various things much more easier than on a map. But we are very, very lucky in this country because Ordnance Survey maps are by far and away the best maps in the world. You know, originally set up to allow artillery to get accurate ranges, which is why it's the Ordnance Survey. So you could, you know, you knew how far your Ordnance could fire because you had an accurate map and you had all the landmarks to shoot it around. Uh, but if, you know, compared to other places in the world to navigate, we have an absolute gift. And I just encourage everyone to just go out, like Sarah says, get lost and then get unlost and just, you know, it's oh. not that frightening. Or just or get temporarily, like, mislaid. temporarily mislaid, as Sarah said. Because it really isn't, it's not that bad. You can't just go back and find where you've gone from. And that's kind of the process we've, we've had to do with some of these routes. I mean, the one we shot up at Reef, Stewie, who owns the Dales Bike Centre there, said, no, that bridle path doesn't exist anymore you're an idiot for going to try. I was like, well, we'll go and try and find it. And that was the one we ended up carrying uh, the tandem through some boulders. But again, the positive of that was we found... Petunia. Petunia. An abandoned slate mine. Just bottoming out, you know, with a complete with a, a cart on rails still sat outside it from when the lead mines were up there. So, I mean, again, yeah. that became memorable just for that reason. And then there was the one in Wales, McCuntless. Yes. So we were going along this road and we knew we needed a turn. We absolutely knew we needed a turn. And we'd been up and down this road <coughs> for this gravel path. Yeah. Four times. Yeah. Going up and down. But we know it's here, we know it's here. And the it must have been the fourth time we went past it. I went, is it there? And literally there was about a hundred meters of it being completely upgrown and then it opened wide it's into just... this beautiful path that went down into a fall. Yeah, and... beautiful medieval track. And that's that's where it's great, having an extra pair of eyes on the back of the bike as well. Because Sarah's spotting things. And also she's going, what's that over there? And because I know of my background in history and things like that, I'll often assume far too much and do the uh, correct dysfunction thing of going, oh dear, you should know about that. And, and Sarah will go, right, I know, explain to me. What I'm, where, when we're at an Iron Age port, what am I actually looking at here? You know, or why is a henge not an Iron Age hill for, or the, the ditches on the inside, and things like that. But again, just Thornborough, that's another great site. There's a beautiful ride up to there. And it's now all owned by English. I don't know if you know Thornborough Henges north of Ripon, the three henges up there. Um, English Heritage have bought both sites now. Yeah. And it's basically a northern Stonehenge. Stonehenge complex, because you can follow, again, the archeology span of that pretty much starts in Boroughbridge at the Devil's Arrows, which Sarah grew up next to. That's another I, year of your link with Yeah, it was, it was funny because I've grown up with them. I didn't think they were anything special. We were like, oh yeah, they're just down at the end of the garden. There they are. And um, we had somebody that used the, the ride and went to see them and had a really like funny feeling when they went near them and everything. And I was like, oh, right, okay. Cause, but it, it's different for everyone. Because the thing that I love, my favorite thing is the black and white road signs. 
you know you're out in the proper country when the, the road signs go to be those black and white ones. Yeah. And I always say to you, oh, I know it's going to be a good ride if there's black and white road signs. <laughs> Yeah, and you made me take, that's, that's Sarah's other key job, is actually making me take photographs, because we try and populate the commute site with photographic highlights as well. And eventually, we might do a, we might do pamphlets, if you, you know, well, I think we've been talking long enough now, yeah, well, really, yeah. Up, yeah, we have. Yeah, so, you know, we'll open it up to questions now, and just things like, you know, let, you know, without being too selfish, it'd be great to know what you think of what we're doing you know do you think it's just an indulgence on our part and you know bloody hell they think they're full of themselves telling us all about their rides around the countryside why on earth would we want to watch them you know we'd rather have a map or you know do you use gps files or would you like a website set up for it where you can print out a paper map and sort of you know what what do you find good about how we're doing it and what you don't i mean you can come up and just collar us later but uh, I'm thinking, have we missed, what have we missed out, Derek? You covered what you need to cover. I mean, I think ultimately, you've enjoyed doing what you're doing. And let's be honest, we've all done rides before. One question for me is, why are you still smiling at each other? I mean, I've been riding all <laughs> after five minutes we're arguing. It's the tandem. <laughs> Genuinely, yeah, we've not really talked about the tandem. We're lucky that we really get on well riding a tandem. I've ridden tandem with people who are very, very fit, very, very focused, and it's like they're pedalling in the opposite direction. Or, and the other thing that anyone, nobody understands about tandem, Sarah is completely in charge of the steering and the direction we're going. All I do is waggle the bars on the front and brake, but actually all the leaning and actually going around corners, particularly off-road, is entirely down to Sarah, because she's in the centre. So if she leaves, yeah. there's nothing I can do with those yeah. handlebars that will stop that bike from going that direction. So everybody that shouts at me, she's not pedalling. <laughs> I'm the actual engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus, and you're the steering as yeah. well. So, uh, yeah, if we, we would be very, very rich if we rich. had, if you had a pound <laughs> for every time we said that. But, and also, it's just, an, if we can actually chat as well, because we're, I mean, I had it made as long as I could. So it was wasn't completely deafening, all the time coming from the back. But uh, but seriously, you know, it's a great way because I ride for my job. It's a great way for us to, you know, ride together and get to the same place at the same time, even if that is occasionally upside down on the screen. Not very often. No. Not very often. Sorry. Can I just say, I'm lucky enough to have a stoker who is my turbo charger <laughs> as well. On power up hills. Yeah. What does it for me? Well, then um, The other thing is, just looking at some of your filming, I'm just astonished that you found a dry route in the middle of winter. This must have been five years ago. This was on North was your Hours at the beginning. Oh, yeah, it was yes. Dry. Yes. When did this happen? <laughs> Actually, that route is surprisingly weatherproof. The, the one along the uh, scarp at yeah. Sutton Bank. Yeah, because it's old drove roads, again, that's one something to look at. Old drove roads for cattle, which you know you're on because there will always be nettles alongside them, because nettles love old pea. So it's been cow nitrogen. driven along them, they love the nitrogen in yeah. it. So you can often tell when you're on an old drove road, and they're really broad. And the ride from Sutton Bank, you can pretty much ride all the way to Saltburn, off road. And uh, so we, we did that as a, as a feature once for a, uh, for all the magazines I worked for. And with the idea was we set off at dusk and we were, we were going to arrange, end, arrange to uh, end at the pier at Saltburn since the sun came up. Because we cut off the cheesy title, Pier Pressure. <laughs> but unfortunately, that night there was a huge tailwind and so we got there about two o'clock in the morning and had to, lie, had to sleep underneath the photographer's van for three hours. But anyway, yeah, no, uh, again, it's, it's, it's local knowledge. Like I say, there are some routes I wouldn't do now but then there are other, I, could, I can think of routes straight away. And this is something I've said to Vince. If anybody wants to come and sort of have a trial run on a pedaling pass style route or just a gravel style route, I, we'd be absolutely delighted to uh, take the group out. And we might try and get that set up as a club thing, actually. Yeah, we we'll go. Could we also, could we also just lastly, <laughs> you rode by Parsonate Castle. 
Yes. I assume you've been in. Yes. Into the church. Yeah. 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 But again, but often we don't get chance because we're trying to. That's. I mean, I'd say if anything, we kind of gloss over stuff. We'll often go past things like I did the route of Cambridge. I went past Duxford Air Museum. I mean, that's a full day. And you know, and but each spot, you know, even just you can spend a long time just at the Opera of Roman Fort and things like that. So, again, what Sarah says, the longer you take, I think hopefully the more enjoyable the routes will be because you'll just spot more, and uh, you know, and get more out of each point where you stop and each point where you take it in. Sorry, Penny. I'm just saying, can we listen to a bit of this? We've got, we've got any any of this? Can you turn the volume on so we can see what it sounds like? Uh, Got a little tea room. Well, Essential knowledge. <laughs> yeah. And so we'll, this is what we'll try and do as we're going along. It's a really nice one. The meander for it. Beautiful. Oh yeah, this is the hugget. Yeah, this is. Oh, this is hugget. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the minced away there. The walking route that comes through here. And to make navigation easy, you can see there. Yeah, oh, this is basically following. This is my very high tech way of telling you where you are on the route. Sorry, I'm not, I'm no, as you'll probably guess, I'm no IT specialist, but just a little clip in the top corner. And uh, what then? Do, do, do people use the What Three Words app at all? So, I mean, would it be helpful? For each clip, if we put a what three words locator on it. Okay, right. There's, there's things like that. If we can, if you know, if anybody wants to come back with suggestions or after this evening, if they relay them to Rich, or just leave them in the comments. That'd be great for me. Oh, Sarah loves Highland Mounts. Well, she's not massively fond on. I like them behind effects. <laughs> We're in Millington Park. Yeah. <laughs> Practice. But Sarah has found, Sarah's definitely it's found Shandy a, is the I best know, energy drink. I don't know, there's just something really. And many a ride has been saved by a pub garden. Yes, I love a Shandy. Oh, and those are my road signs that I like. Friendly is pub stop. I'm quite obsessed by pubs, quite clearly. <laughs> it was so nice. Lovely summer's evening. And I do feel slightly. Nostalgic, I think. That's the right word for it. Because I'm trying to find that chapel we were talking about. How, how long is each um, video in relation to arrive generally? That's average length, about half an hour. Oh, we've got the adverts. Yeah. Did you how long does this video start? Do you know? It's normal. How long is the average video? Uh, about half an hour, depending. I don't have an aim, they're as long as they are. But I try and keep it to about. I mean, that's one of the things we found because, you know, as we've sort of done more of them, uh, is working out how to sort of record less almost. Because the temptation is to start filming everything. Yeah. And then it's really easy to lose focus. And also, I mean, Sarah made the point early on don't put everything in because then there's no surprises yeah. for you when you're riding. Yeah. So. And also, that's a neat way of glossing over things where we haven't noticed it. I haven't made the right notes or we haven't noticed it. You know, it's amazing how many stately homes there are that aren't even listed. Or you'll be riding along and go, wow, look at that. And, but that's, you know, we'll pretend we leave those in for people to discover and enjoy themselves. It was towards the end of the ride, wasn't it? What should novice riders think about tackling on these rides? Because obviously you guys are used to it, I think what you need is good layers. You need to make sure you've got a warm jacket. So, was this bike or clothing, Derek? Okay. Yeah, but I think food that I mentioned before, I always have my carry packs. We've always got spare clothing with us because it's British weather. It can be really lovely one minute and then the next minute you're soaking. Yeah. So, um, and I feel the cold. So, I always have a good jacket with me, um, and I'll let you do the bikes. Don't ride, don't do an adventure ride on something you've just bought. Use, <laughs> the bike you have now is the best bike. You know, I would say, so don't, you know, make, you know, or by all means, get to Chevin, 
buy a lovely new gravel bike, but don't, don't, the first thing you do is set off on a 300 kilometer ride around, you know, Cornwall or something like that, you know. Use, yeah. tri use tried and trusted equipment. I'd ask that. You can ride any bike anywhere, right? Yeah. Any bike anywhere. It just might not work as well in some circumstances. But do you know what? You can always get that from the country. Yeah, so exactly. Bike, yeah. Any bike anywhere. And also, if, if you're using e-bikes, we'll always try and include places which have charging points uh, where you can, you know, get recharged. But we've found a lot of the times, as long as you ask nicely, most CAFs, and you take your charger with you, a lot of CAFs will be perfectly fine if you, you know, but don't, don't be a rambler. Don't buy a lemonade and then all sit outside with your sandwiches and your flasks, all 10 of you, because we've seen that happen so many times. Uh, you know, go in, but buy, you know, buy, buy yourself a nice snack and a pot of tea and make it worth their while to recharge your bike for a while. And again, you know, we've had some great chats with people, like the pub we stayed at in Uffington when we shot that video. They had no idea that King Alfred's Way, you know, literally hundreds of riders a day were passing just at the top of the hill. And then, but then when I've been we have Facebook pages for each of those routes and where like local businesses and stuff have engaged with it, it's been really, really popular. You know, they've got great business from it. Just from going, oh, we're open, you know, we've got a campsite or, you know, we can, we've got inner tubes or a pub or something like that. But yeah, I'm sorry, not past the chapel there, but I hope you saw it, that little chapel coming out of the, literally in the corner of that field with the sun shining through it. We hadn't even planned on that. And then, it is the unexpected stuff. You will have, you will find things, and you can just even when you're going along something like this, and you've got all the all the yellow fields around you, it's stunning. I mean, the countryside, particularly Yorkshire, it's so beautiful and it's so varied. The differences between the dales and the wolds and the yeah. coast and Sheffield. Yeah, yeah. Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, but again, I mean, yeah. Sheffield been fascinating history in itself. Yeah. Absolutely, it's just a bit hilly. Yeah, because we keep saying we're going to do one in York. Yeah, we need, we need to do York. We were thinking of doing that on hire bikes, just because we figured a lot of people would go there yeah. and hire a bike. And it's quite a daunting task, York. <laughs> but we probably, but the route we've got, yeah. again, we've tried to do something different in it where we've taken people down snickle ways that you can use on bikes and things like that. Because if you go to York, you know there's a minster. You know, you don't need pedalling past to tell you there's a minster there. But if we can tell you where the sort of medieval bedern is, or, you know, I grew up in York, so I knew some of the back streets uh, there, and, and we'll always try and give a slight slant on it rather than being the conventional thing. Because like Sarah says, going to Stonehenge is awful. It's, for a start, most of the Stonehenge Museum is about 70% shop. It's about 10% of an artist's impression of a sun coming up in the Paleolithic period. The, by on Sarah's account, the worst, worst public choice. lose you've ever been in, yeah. in this state of the art centre. And the only way you can get to Stonehenge is in a bus. Unless you park at Lark Hill and ride down the track past the, uh, the hippie encampment, and then you come up on Stonehenge beautifully through, you know, through burial mounds, and you're just the other side of the road. But, you know, and you haven't paid... I mean, we're, just to point out, we are English Heritage members, we're not encouraging you to uh, bypass the English Heritage, but I think it was nine. Maybe ninety pounds or something. Can't remember. I know. I remember. I was shocked at how much it was. And yet, you can pedal to Wayland Smithy and meet a genuine druid popping his head out of a Neolithic tomb, absolutely free. Sorry. In terms of geographic coverage, what's your network like around the country? Then, or your routes? It's utterly random. To yes. at the moment, uh, Yorkshire, we've done a lot. Yeah. Just because it's handy for yeah. us. Uh, Norfolk we've done some because I was doing some work for Cycling UK in Norfolk and we ended up going there on holiday as well and so and, and, and it's a really good place for nice easy cycle rides uh, I've done some stuff in Wales but I mean kind of we can go wherever we want but I think we're going to colour in Yorkshire first yes just because yeah. it's convenient and if you I mean, somewhere that you would like us to do let's know because yeah, yeah, all suggestions are very, that, very welcome. What, what I'm thinking is if you let us know distance as well, because at the moment we're kind of guessing, and some of the rides are quite long, some of them are very short. If you let us know what sort of distances you've been looking for, um, that, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, we moderate them 
in terms of so if it's a more hilly ride if it's more challenging terrain a will flag that up but will also generally make it shorter so obviously route in norfolk you feel superhuman because you can glide along on flat roads for days you know with very very little effort but if you're heading up past reef and you're literally climbing for the first hour even if it's a gentle climb that's and you know that the next hour is downhill or well the next half an hour generally is the way things go but again that's a, that's a different challenge but speaking to Vince you guys get some you know you get some serious distances I was very impressed by how far wheelies I'm reading the ride reports and things real easy you know it's great to know because I think I was kind of underestimating how far people wanted to go but again you know we'll always do a loop and try and, and almost do it like a but do it sort of like a ladder so there are you know, I've got that far, I've had enough now, I can just loop across, you know, rather than setting out in a massive circuit, we'll try and do a sort of lozenge shape so it's easy to get back on. And then, because there's always, you can always go back and do the second half of the route another time. You know, it's, it's very much about the journey and exploring rather than the completion side of things. Yeah. And guys, you say the routes are on the commute? Yes, they're on the commute app. Do you need to subscribe as well? No, I don't think so. I think it's a free app. Yeah, I mean, you can pay a premium and get extra features on it. But one of the reasons we, again, we did this, because Sarah was using Commute for walking and cycling routes, and often just finding they're quite random. And also, Commute has this helpful feature where it decides it knows better than things like the Ministry of Defence. I've got a friend who lives on Salisbury Plain and regularly finds people going, trying to ride past red flags on firing ranges going, but Commute says I can go this way. It's like, Commute may well do, but you may meet a 50 ton tank with very limited visibility coming around a corner at 30 miles an hour. At which point, holding up this yacht phone and going, probably won't save you. But, uh, so yeah, it's on Commute. But again, any other, if any people have got other platforms they'd like to see it on, you know, let us know in the comments or come and see us at the end. Um, Bike? Yes. Yeah. Uh, have we done any bike packing? I've done it for the routes when I've done it for Cycling UK, uh, just because it's an easy way of doing it, and I often don't know how far I'm going to get. Uh, for this, we tend to take the. We'll stay in a nice. You know, we'll stay. We've we've found you get really good deals on the old hotels that they used to use in coach parties. You get some tracking deals with them. They've generally got quite a dangerous looking sauna or jacuzzi, which is a real blind. <laughs> when you've been caught in a hailstorm on Hadrian's Wall, you know, just being able to go back and have a nice pub and, you know, have your food on site and things like that, they find that works for us for this. But obviously, these would work well as bike packing routes as well. And all the historic based routes for Cycling UK are designed as bike packing routes. And, uh, but again, another thing we found sort of we had a great moment in Wales where we'd been at this pub, had lovely locally sourced food. And we were riding the next day, and we bumped into this ancient guy rummaging around in the undergrowth. And it turned out he was the one who picked all the fruit for the fruit pudding we'd had the night before. <laughs> and he'd been working in that forest. He'd started in Dolby and ended up in Wales. And he'd just been a forester. He was, he was started off the Second World War. An event, and he was working for forestry, but he used to collect flowers for his wife. And he was coming out of the woods with a bundle of flowers in this remote mountain road in Wales, uh, up in the Dubby Valley. And a bloke stopped his van and went, where did you find those? Because he had this particular fronds, Europe florist, I can't remember what it was. He had some fronds know. for the forestry. Some ferns, I think Yeah, he, he had some ferns. And this chap was driving around Wales in this van trying to find these ferns for his incredibly high-class florists in Knightsbridge. And this chap went, oh, they're everywhere here. He's like, what kind of ferns do you want? And the bloke said, well, I'll give you this much for that bundle of flowers. And he was like, well, that's more than I make in a week. <laughs> and so he went, right, OK. He was like, well, you know, how often can you get me these? I was like, well, I can get them as many as you want, wherever want. And for the next 50 years, he worked for this florist, as well as doing, officially doing floristry. He had this, you know, he had a very, very nice life providing specific fronds for a florist in London. And he was the most 
fabulous. I don't think he had any intact fingers. Yes. Just from gradually, he gradually just locked himself into a mitten status, <laughs> cutting various things off as he went along. But it was it was just great. Yeah, so I think this is the point at which Stewie told you that yeah. bridal, the bridal path that we took think, didn't work. Yeah, I think he was wanting to advertise the Dale's Bike Centre. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, you if you've never been up to the Dale's Bike Centre, Brenda's cakes are incredible. So, uh, and this is Stewie telling me you should definitely not do that bridal path, which we then did later, which led to... Oh yeah, that's where we got stuck. Yeah. That's it, look at me going down. But again, this is in historic landscapes because a hush, this is Bunton Hush in Swaledale, and a hush is where they dam the top of a stream and just let the water build up, build up, build up, build up, and then let it all rip down the hillside and expose all the ore. And it was much easier because it was near the surface. And so you've got hushes all over the dales, but We'd possibly have had a go, we have got a mountain bike tandem as well, which I raced with my daughter. And that, that goes down on speakable slope, but it was a little bit much. I broke my wrist going down there. Ah, Aww. yeah. It's quite easy. I'm not surprised. 15 years ago. Yeah. Going down it in cycling shoes wasn't my best option either. See if I can follow. Sorry, you remember. There we go. There, there it is. There's Petunia. There's Petunia the mine. Priscilla! Priscilla! There sorry, yeah. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, you know, again, there's a whole history of Dale's mining that you can go into. There's whole websites. Uh, and again, you know, we're very much skimming the surface of the information. You know, Sarah listens to a lot of history podcasts. I'll look on Wikipedia and stuff like that. But the wormholes you can vanish down really are, as soon as you get into history, are pretty much limitless. On their Sarah's snacks. Yeah. 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 And this is where the weather caught up with us a bit. But again, you'd struggle to, you know, you can join these dots up very easily by bike, and you'd really struggle to on a walk. It'd be a, it'd be a long old walk with this, and you're definitely not going to get the car up there. And again, those are all the old mine workings on the other side. That's where we come down through. We were very glad the pub had the open fire going. And we were very glad we had extra jackets with us. Yes, this was a good extra jacket. This, moment. I had, I already had a jacket on, and then I had an extra jacket with me. Because this is August. I mean, you were saying before, how do we find dry routes in, you know, I think it was, it was about this time last year, we were shot that route up by, uh, up on Sutton Bank, and it looked like glorious summer. This was August. So that's, that's British weather for you. Anyone have any more questions? Or you probably all need a drink, not something to eat. But thank you very, very much for your patience. Oh, thank uh, you so you much get... for turning out as well. <laughs> well, thanks, thank you for being an absolute star, because you were nervous as heck. I won't say what she said about Derek. But hey, hey, Derek arranged the evening, and then Derek informed us last night just how many people had actually signed up. But you, uh, luckily you had a busy day at work, and you, you couldn't really think much about it. Yes. So. so thank you very much for coming. It's meant a huge amount to us that you've all taken the time to turn out. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on a crisp November morning like this, I get to go no finer way to experience ancient Britain than on a bike. <laughs>